Hey everyone, welcome to another video. In this one, I just wanted to share some tips and a general workflow for post-processing your landscape images. I've got a few files here that I'm gonna work on and this is just what I'd call like a first passover on these. So it's not a full complete start to finish, but it's gonna give you that general 90% on how I like to um, edit my landscape images. So let's take a look. I'm gonna open these up. I'm in Bridge at the moment. And then I typically like to work in Adobe Camera Raw. So when I open the raw files up from Bridge, we appear here in Camera Raw. So if you're a Lightroom user, you should be able to uh, follow along quite easily, even if you're in Capture One as well. My workflow is very simple and easy to adopt. So I have these three files and these have not been processed whatsoever. I've got a waterfall scene here, this uh, tree frame, and then uh, this other waterfall image. So all different focal lengths, different lighting. As I mentioned, this is just a, a first passover. I might not even keep these and there's nothing wrong with that. I like to just get a start on processing something that has potential and then I let it marinate, let it sit in a draft folder. But let's just begin with this one. And one of the problems here is there's a lack of contrast. You can see we don't have any brights, we don't have any darks. There's nothing wrong with that, but I think this image will have more depth if we create that. So first and foremost, um, generally I'll apply a landscape profile, which I'm going to do now. It hasn't done much in this case. You can see the colors just get slightly richer. Now to start to create the depth, what I wanna do is darken this right-hand side here because this is closest to us. So in nature, whatever is closest will have the, the deeper tones and then progressively things should get lighter. So I wanna create a brighter portion on the left and a darker portion on the right. If we get the contrast lighter, the problem with this is it's doing every part of the frame, um, getting darker, getting brighter. We wanna do that locally. So I'm not really going to do too much globally right now. Instead, we'll go to the color tab and I'll just cool things down. I find these scenes look a lot nicer when they're slightly cooler. So we're just gonna cool that down a touch with the temperature and lean into the greens a little here as well. I'm not gonna to touch the vibrance or saturation at the moment. I think this image naturally just looks better because it is more or less a monochrome scene anyway. So we're gonna leave the colors at the moment. Let's just get into the fun stuff. What I'm going to do is click the masking tool and the main tool that I will use is the brush. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that this is all I like to use. And from now on, we're just gonna push K to use the brush and the feather flow and density is at 100. So if you're planning on using this in the future, make sure you've got those at 100. It's just a lot easier and softer to use. So like I said, I wanna darken the lower right-hand corner. I'm gonna use contrast to do that. And as I apply the brush all through here like that, you can see where that's gone. Now I'm going to come in and adjust further. I like to put the adjustment on the brush first so I can see in real time the result of the brushing and then I can just move and kind of free flow if I'm liking the result. I think it's way more intuitive to use it that way. So we've applied a lot of contrast there. I don't wanna bring the exposure down because I'll lose all the light that's on the rock, the depth will disappear. So more contrast and I'll even go down in this case, do some clarity. You can see the depth that that's bringing out in that granite wall. So some clarity about 15, I'm gonna leave that there for now. Let's do the opposite on the top left corner. I push K for a new brush. And when I say the opposite, now we're going to create that light coming in. We can see it is anyway on that left-hand side. So we're just gonna work with that and emphasize it. I'm gonna bring the exposure up. So I'm doing exposure now. And what I wanna do is just drop in some of that brighter light. And you can see I've applied that there before, after. So I zoom out and then use the edge of the brush in order to just feather that in very gently. I'm gonna also zoom out and push K for a new brush. And this one, I'm going to actually decrease the exposure, increase the contrast. What I'm trying to do is just darken the top part of the frame here now. And even this lower left, just so basically the bottom lower left. And we might just punch this in slightly tighter. I don't want all that sky. I want some of it though, because that really pulls the eye through the frame. I'm gonna offset the waterfall just to the right because it's flowing leftwards. So I put it to the right. And now when we maybe introduce a hint more light, let's bring the whites up. White is light. So this will be good for some of the mist that's getting caught up here. I'll turn that on and off so you can see the difference. Very subtle. 
Subtlety is the key with the processing. And now for this last brush, we're just going to just punch that light in on the right hand side. You can see that coming in. And back to the color now, slightly cooler I'm feeling. We wanna go cooler here. We are getting to the point now that the first pass over is more, should be complete. And we should probably leave this to marinade because I feel like we're gonna to get to the point soon where we're just gonna maybe take things too far. Um, so it's good to come back with fresh eyes, but let's do a before and after. That's what it was, that's where it's at. See how we're really creating a bit more depth in the frame instead of it being so flat. And then we're progressively leading the eye from that corner across like so. That gives you a sense of direction on that one. So this is where I'd just push done and it would basically create a memory of that edit, come back to it later and then keep working on it. Let's see how we'd approach this scene. So this is slightly wider, 20 mil. And I, th I have a feeling this will work pretty nicely as a 16 by nine, about there. So we might leave that. I remember shooting this thinking that at the time. So we might go 16 by nine. I like how I've got the rocks down the bottom as a bit of a, a natural frame there. We've got the cascades in the river. Then we hit our waterfall in the background. I'm gonna put the landscape profile on. You can see a subtle difference there in the colors. Again, I might just cool this one ever so slightly. And now I'll increase the vibrance. And we need to, again, just build out some depth. So in that case, heavier contrast in the foreground get those tones darker and richer. And then as we roll on through to that background, we basically want the opposite where we're going to lift up the tone. So I'll, I'll get the dark tones, which is the shadows and the blacks. And I'm just going to really lift those, especially around this waterfall area. I want to recess that, make it appear further away. And I wouldn't mind just dropping in a, a hint of light into this one as well, just from the very top exposure coming up. And let's just have a play with that. I'm just trying to, you know, above this waterfall became open sky. So if anything, you know, your gentle, very soft diffused light, even on a cloudy day, will still come from above. So I've just dropped that in the, the top part of the frame there. To be honest, like I, I don't like getting away from a two to three or a 16 by nine with my work. I, I like to have a pretty consistent look with the ratios, but this one probably would look nice even as a four by five, just a little tighter because there's not too much going on that whole in, entire left-hand side. It's a shame that I like on the right-hand side, there's some of these trees, which just add a few more subjects to look at. But yeah, the, just the top left, there's not much happening there. Um, like I said, potentially a, a different ratio, four by five, you know, just nip it in like that even. That can work. Now we're getting the best of everything without having the eye wander off to the side. Something different anyway. Um, like I said, a bit more exposure here still, I think just coming in from the top and down the bottom, even more contrast. So I'm just reapplying what we did earlier. You're just building those layers up, build them up and bring some whites up, Whoop. whites, highlights, and this will just lift anywhere that just has a hint of light. So all these trees are just lifting the whites on them. Now into the river, I'm just running along with this now because I'm liking the result. Turn that on and off so you can see what's happening there. And that just helps those greens in those trees just not be so flat. We'll do a before and after, see where we're at on this one. Before, after. Real simple adjustments just to help lead the eye and create a, a more three-dimensional feel bring the best out in what you've captured. Just drop back those highlights a little here. And again, just leave that one where it's at. The last image, probably the simplest one, not look at that, you barely needs to be processed at all. Drop this one down, full frame. The actual framing, I'm pretty happy with that, which that's the goal. I don't really want to crop if I don't have to. Landscape profile, this would work good as a black and white as well because of the high contrast we have. I'll keep the color in this case though. And what do we want to do? Jeez, you know, not much has to be done here. A small amount of vibrance. And I'll show you what you can do when you have some nice light coming in like that. It's quite white, those beams. You could color grade, warm up those highlights. So I've gone into the color grading. 
I've selected a, a warmer hue and now I hold shift, click and drag and see how it's transforming. Anything that's a highlight is becoming warmer. So it's just a, gives you an idea. It works well on sunrise and sunset photos. Not entirely necessary on this one. What I will show you is if you wanted to bring out some of this light, which is hitting the mist, creating those beams, you can bring the whites up and the highlights on a brush. And because the feather's really high, you have a lot of freedom here to just work around where that nice light's coming in like this. I like how it's just catching that part on the left as well. You can even raise the blacks on that if you wanted to, but I'll leave them and we'll just work the whites even more. Turn that on and off before, after. You can just see what we're doing. We're basically just enhancing what we've already captured. This one would also probably work well as a 16 by nine. Like I said, I'm quite happy with the two to three ratio. Yeah, I'd leave it as a two to three, just gives it some more breathing space. Dial it up like that. And, you know, heavier contrast could also work well if you wanna really drop that background off. But I like a slightly softer painterly look, particularly for this scene. Honestly, that's more or less where I'd take it. Just pull those highlights down a little. And if you wanted to change the hue, the colors of the tree slightly, you could jump into your mixer, the hue, jump into the yellows and the greens and just experiment if you wanna go cooler, warmer, but I think it's pretty much bang on where it needs to be. And I think we have the main emphasis in the right area, the strongest light right where the main subject matter is, where I'm trying to lead the eye. What do I do from this point? Like I said, if we just push done, it will basically create a memory of these. So when I open up the raw again, it will have everything reapplied. If I'm 100% confident that, well, not 100% not confident, but the next step, if I think it, it's gonna be something I'll probably wanna keep or at least revisit, I'll push open object. So I make sure that these are going to open as a smart object, which means we can come back. I'll push that now. We can come back, double click the layer, and then it'll put us back in ACR with everything to be adjusted still, nothing's locked in. Then what I do is I'll file, save as, and I'll save these on my portable hard drive in a draft folder. So this is the draft folder here. I'll just call it example. And PSD, Photoshop document. That's what I use, or you could do a TIFF file, but these are high res uncompressed. Then I push save. Now in the future, when I open that PSD up, it's completely separate from the raw, but it's got the edit within the file and it will open up here in Photoshop. If I double click that layer, it's a smart object. Bang, back into camera raw. And you can see that everything here is like it was when we worked on it, all the masking and everything like that. So actually the PSD becomes more valuable than the raw file because you've got the edit in there as well. So if you happen to lose the raw, but you've still got the PSD, great, because it's basically the raw. You can always reset everything right here and it goes back to being reset. So that's kind of my approach. Raw, save it as a PSD and as a draft, reopen it. When I'm finally happy, I've done a few passes over the file, let my eyes refresh then it kind of gets exported as a JPEG file, export, save for web. And then from here, I shrink it down to 1500 pixels on the longest edge. And that looks good on the social media, um, Instagram, Facebook, on the website. So I just select JPEG, maximum quality, and then down the bottom image size, 1500 on the longest edge, save, and now that will be a JPEG and I just keep those saved on the desktop and send them to the phone as well. And they look good on the screen, but they're not too big that they get compressed by the software or people can steal them and do anything with them. They're just too small. So it gives you a bit of an idea of the workflow anyway. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Maybe picked up a few little insights. Honestly though, that's that's my workflow. Sometimes people say, okay, but what's the rest of the stuff you do? Or what? where's the rest of the tricks? This is it here, using the brush, working on, it's dodging and burning essentially, it's dark, darkening areas, brightening areas, create the illusion of depth. We're working in a two dimensional space. We're just trying to get that to look more three dimensional. And I kind of approach these raw files, maybe somewhat similar to how a painter might approach the canvas in working with that tonality and that gradient going from the darkest of darks generally on the edges and then progressively getting lighter through the frame. If you have any questions, please leave them below. If you wanna follow along on a longer 
tutorial with the raw files included, just check out the link to one of my courses. People seem to be enjoying that one. So thank you so much for your support there. Otherwise, there's plenty more on the channel. So I hope to see you in another video shortly. Cheers.